Yo, what is going on guys? It is Randy and we are back with our first draft analysis of the Pokemon Sword and Shield era. Thank you all who have been patient with me and you know, obviously my last upload was the GBA Championship. So I had a YouTube stream the past few times, but um, that was just like a multi-stream with Twitch just, you know, to get the most views possible. But nonetheless, th thank you all for the continued support throughout the years and I look forward to jumping into a completely new uh you know generation of mines uh, competitively now before i begin i do want to note this is actually the third season in the amateur battle league this is a, the league we're joining as you can tell on the screen but what makes this different from something you guys have normally seen on the channel <clears throat> is that this is actually a doubles league this is going to be played on sword and shield in doubles format so essentially it's like a vgc format so people have been calling it but i mean it's really just doubles format um which is really, really cool, man. I've, I've been loving doubles this gen. Uh, obviously, with the whole single battle timer limit, uh, my interest for singles leagues is definitely not high right now. Although, I, w I did join one. You'll see the draft analysis for that in about two days. So, be on the lookout for that. Um, you'll probably have seen it on other coaches' channels. I know Leo uploaded his earlier on the 4th of January. So, it's the, um, the Galarian Draft League. Um, Defenders League, sorry. <laughs> draft League. Um, so yeah, it's a very fun league, a bunch of good friends in there, and some people I haven't really talked to that much, but I do look forward to making uh, some good friends there. But we are talking about the ABL today, and we actually concluded the live draft over on Kyle A's channel uh, earlier today. Oh, I'm recording this on the 4th, so if you guys want to go take a peep at it on his Twitch, you could. But, you know, if you want to see what I got, I got you guys right here. So real quick, um, no face cam, but you can see I have some plugs, the Pokemon ABL. Make sure you follow them on Twitter, and check out their website. I want to say... A huge thanks to the entire ABL staff and those who, who are behind the scenes, whether it be Perk and Curse and whoever else does um, work on this league. This league has so much input into it, man. Like, there's been so much uh, work done uh, in this league, you know, for this league that it's just, it's incredible, man. Like, I really am excited um, to be a part of this league. And you guys got to see this plaque, too, man. This plaque that they have here is absolutely sick. Let me show you guys the plaque before we move forward because. This is honestly one of the reasons why I freaking joined this league. This is it's just so cool. Um, if I can find it wherever it is. Um, but yeah, it's got like a legitimate trophy, which I think is very, very cool. Um, yeah, I thought it was a plaque, but it's, it's, it's a trophy. But there it is, man. That is that is so clean. I really want this so bad. And I'm going to work towards hopefully getting it. But nonetheless, I'm going to have a good time. And you know, no matter what happens, I'll be satisfied with the result. So again, very sick trophy. It'd be awesome to have uh, in, my, in my setup. So, with all that being said, uh, make sure you check out the website, join the Discord, check out the the links, Twitter, and the website. And with that, we can move forward. So, I actually had the fifth overall pick, I believe. So, we have a, a draft pool of 18 players. We each get 11 Mons and one Dynamax Captain. This Dynamax Captain can also be a Gigantamax Captain, but uh, which is pretty flexible for, for Mons like Snorlax. If someone were to Gigantamax that as their Captain, they can also use it as a G-Max if they declare it as a G-Max captain, but they can flex between G-Max or regular Dynamax throughout the weeks if they don't want to run, let's say, Gigantamax and Relax, which in some cases they probably wouldn't want to, but I think in that case they probably would. But that's just an example. Um, the only other clauses we have is that uh, Galarian, Galarian to Manitan cannot hold a choice item, which is a little weird. I, I don't necessarily like think that's going to be a big deal, even if it could hold a choice item. Um, but I can see why they did it. You know, there's some clauses put in that, you know, are a little questionable. But, I mean, if I if I really thought something was bad, I would have spoke up about it. But it, it should be fine. Um, Omni Boost is banned. It probably shouldn't be banned. Um, a lot of the mods that get Omni Boost aren't even that good anyways. So, but again, it's just some clauses that the most of us agreed on. And there was no point in even trying to question it. So, we're just going to move forward with that. All the links to the coaches participating will be in the link in the description below. As normal... For draft analysis like this uh new lord is music down a little bit i'll have to blend it out later but we're gonna have this loop <laughs> the whole time but yeah let's go ahead and jump into it y'all my first round pick was excadrill if any of y'all have touched doubles this season or even last season like since the game came out you guys would know excadrill is probably one of the most popular mods to use right now definitely top three it's everywhere man it's everywhere whether it be sand rush or mold breaker um, this mod is extremely, extremely good in doubles, and having it at five honestly is probably considered a steal. 
but it's a top five mod in the format, so maybe it's not a steal at all. Um, but obviously, Earthquake is a little weaker in doubles. It's going to be doing less damage and spread moves, but it hits both targets, which is always nice. But high horsepower provides it as an alternative for a single target attack. Base 95 power, so only five difference from the Earthquake. Um, but the moves like Rock Slide, it's SD. Um, what else is there? Uh, I guess Break Break for screens and all that sort of stuff. Very, very potential dynamax captain but i do have some other candidates later on that could also be my dynamax captain so be on the lookout later on but yeah extra drill really really good i look forward to um building around it so my round two pick you can probably guess what what would partner with the extra drill i went ahead and grabbed gigalith now i do want to say t-tar was on my radar but i had a feeling t-tar wouldn't have made it back to me i was fifth overall so with 18 coaches it would have been a long ride for it to be to be um to be had and sure enough, it was taken by Salabgo, coach of the uh, Copenhagen Canines. So I'll forever hate him for that. <laughs> nah, but he, he's the goat. I love I love uh, Salabgo. He's awesome. But yeah, Gigalith's fine. I was going to choose between Hippo or Gigalith. Hippo, like, thinking about it back, like, thinking back now, Hippo probably would have been fine. But the only reason why I liked Gigalith was, was the fact that it gets the boost from the sand. Getting the spadef boost. Hippo does have the recovery going for it. But having... Um, like just having this the spadef boost in sand makes Gigalith that much better. It hits harder and it's got a better defense stat. So the bulk's a little bit better, uh, but it's obviously the downside is it does not get uh, some sort of recovery move. But Gigalith is still very, very good. It gets body press in this game. So it can utilize that base 130 defense to be able to smash things up. Um, but besides that, Rock Side Spam is always very, very nice as well. It also gives me a slow mode in case I do want to grab Trick Room later on with a base 25 speed. Having that flexibility to go between fast and slow is very important, especially if teams decide to go Trick Room, which you'll probably see, which you'll see later on that they definitely will if you watch other coaches' analysis. So with that, we have number three. We have Pelipper. So... I don't know what was up with this, man. I, I felt like getting weather, I, I, multiple weathers. Um, it could be a little conflicting for sure, especially since this is actually going to be a 6v6 doubles league. So we'll bring six every week, and but we're gonna, and we're going to bring all six. So it's something I definitely do have to be careful of. Like having rain and sand could mess me up, but I, I felt like having that flexibility to force prep on my opponent's ends. And weather in general is really, really good in this format and in this game. Um, given how the weather setters are limited and like Dynamax makes it even more broken. So uh, Pelipper, nothing really to say here. It gets uh, a water boosted attacks in the rain. Base 95 special attack is nothing to laugh at. That's pretty good fizz def. It's one of the very few mods that gets knockoff in this game. So it's not stab, but knockoff is very, very nice to knock off potential choice items or berries that can otherwise be annoying. It gets seed bomb, which is cool. I don't know why that makes it interesting, but it gets Seed Bomb. And then, of course, Tailwind to uh, give us speed control. So next up, we have the Barascuda, the Barascuda, the speed, the Swift Swim Abuser. Now, Ludicolo was gone, unfortunately. I wanted to get Ludicolo, but it's all good. Barascuda arguably is a better partner, given that it has a physical offensive presence. It's really fast already at base 136 speed, so I can run Adamant Nature, and I could even afford to go like no speed investment whatsoever because at level 50, with no speed investment, this thing hits 156 speed. So if you double that, it's over 300, and that's more than enough speed I'll need to outspeed a lot of the threats. So I could invest a lot into bulk, even though it's like pretty frail as it is with base 60 defense, 61 HP, 50 speed F. But I could definitely invest into HP to make it tankier. Um, but otherwise. You know, I guess max speed's fine to outspeed potential scarf mons that could maybe sniff it. It's near its speed, so bear scooter is gonna be a lot of fun. It also gets propeller tail, uh, which is really nice because in case I do end up going against trick room, propeller tail will ignore moves or abilities that redirect targets. So, like for example, like a storm drain gashadon, we're gonna ignore that ability and still hit into the slot we choose to attack in. So if there's an arcanine and a gastro. We can still go for our liquidation into Arcanine and be able to hit it without having to worry about Gastro. If there's a Follow Me Pokemon paired with a Trick Room Setter, we can still go after the Trick Room Setter in case we need to do that. So I think that having those um, uh, features about Barascuda makes it very nice to have, even outside of Rain. So I look forward to using this, and it looks awesome. So, yeah. Next up, we're going to patch up some low, some slow speed. Uh, tiers, I guess. Um, we went ahead and grabbed Gothitelle. Now, Gothitelle arguably should not have made it this far, especially in doubles. Like, in singles, 
you know, people might not bring it because of the timer and all that, but still, man, got to tell with Shadow Tag. It's it's sick, man. It gets Fake Out, Trick Room, Helping Hand, Heal Pulse, Ally Switch. Those were like the best moves it could possibly use in this sort of, uh, in, this, in this game, especially in doubles, BGC. So I can pair this with my Gigalith. I can even pair it with Pelipper if I, you know, minimize speed and Pelipper. But otherwise, Got the Tell is still very good on its own, even if it doesn't set Trick Room. Heal Pulse support, screen support, fake out support, ally switch if you want to run that. Uh, run that. It's very good. And competitive is nothing to, you know, to ignore. Frisk as well. But, I mean, Shadow Tag is just really good. And it definitely forces prep as well if coaches want to, you know, run, you know, U-turns or Volt Switching or, you know, um, what's that item called? The uh, Shed Shell to ignore it. That's something that they will have to prep for, and it's just items I don't have to worry about. Um, so next up, we have another mod to help out with that Trick Room, and it is the Vika Volt. Vika Volt, I want to use Vika Volt. I use it back in VGC 17. I love Vika Volt. Uh, one of my favorite mods. Uh, probably probably one of my top, like, 15 Pokemon, just by design and using it. Like, design and, like, using it well. Like, whenever I use a mod, like, to success, I do get, like, a, a bond with it or, like, a, you know... I just get attached to it in a way. Um, but besides that, Vika Volt actually is still pretty good in, in rain with like a no no trick room mode because it gets agility. So that makes it somewhat respectable in speed. Gets Electro Web to support with uh, more speed control. And then being able to hit Thunders in rain is just really, really fun. Um, also gets Sticky Web as well to a lower speed on the opponent's side. So definitely a very good mod. I also want another ground resist because I already had like two weaknesses and having another ground immunity is always very cool. Still have a little bit of weakness to rock with besides, besides Exodrill, so I'll definitely have to patch that up later on. But Vika Volt, a lot of fun. Gets energy ball. I imagine it's going to do some work this season. Next up, we have the Weavile. And this one, looking back at it, uh, here's a little backstory about Weavile real quick about the draft. So I believe when we started drafting, which was a few, it seems like it was so long ago, but it might have been like a month ago. When I was drafting, I was looking at Showdown. And for some reason, I guess Showdown still had it where to some of the moves that were unreleased were still showing on their movesets for the format. And I think I still saw Weavile had knockoff, but it does not get knockoff, which is awful. Like, it definitely, like, don't get me wrong. Weavile is still good. It's really fast, fake out, it gets Icicle Crash, Ice Shard, um, it gets Taunt. But not having knockoff really, really sucks. I just, I don't know how to feel about it. It's still going to be fine. But, like, Throat Chop will be cool, too, to shut down sound moves. And, like, I guess uh, Night Slash is fine, too. But not having knockoff really just puts a dent into what I was hoping it would be able to do for me. But nonetheless, it's still going to be a very uh, threatening Pokemon to deal with. And I'm sure it'll be able to provide support. Because in doubles, it's going to be more so of a support mon, given that it's so frail. And, like, it'll be able to help out Got the Tail, help out maybe, um, like, we Vika Bolt or something. I definitely think it's going to be a, a good mine, but it'll probably only be there for like having ice shard and fake out sort of stuff. So yeah, next up we have the Butterfree and another great mine that probably should not have made it this far. Compound eyes with sleep powder and hurricane. Dang, you, you got to watch out. I believe hurricane's like 98% accurate if I'm not mistaken, something like that. Because um, the, the boost is like 1.3. Yeah, it's like something like that. I don't know the math off the top of my head. Um, but having sleep powders like don't miss or like practically don't miss is just incredible. Being able to rage powder as well to redirect attacks away from Got the Tail, away from like Excadrill if I want to run that route with like an SD set. Um, and it is worth noting that rage powder does not work on grass types. So if you're a grass type, you can still attack into the slot that they want to. Or you could also run a uh, safety goggles, I believe. Yeah, safety goggles and you can ignore powder moves. And so you can ignore Rage Powder, ignore Sleep Powder. So I imagine people will have to be running some goggles on a few Pokemon um, to ignore the Butterfree. And Butterfree is still pretty good offensively as well. Hurricane Spam gets Quiver Dance, but more so it's going to be support. Rage Powder, Sleep Powder, Hurricanes, Tailwind, that sort of stuff. Uh, next up, we have the Heliolisk, another electric type. But this is really cool because we have Sand and Rain, and this thing can abuse both. It, we, we just need a Torkoal or Nine Tails to complete the trio to get the, the Sun Boost. So, Heliolisk provides a little flexibility in my electric type slot. Dry Skin could be good for Rain. Sand Veil is good for Sand if I want to run some Bright Powder shenanigans on this thing. 
just throwing it out there to any of the other coaches who may watch this. I won't run bright powder. I'm not going to do that to y'all. Like, I'm not going to... I won't do it. I'm sure if someone else was in my position, he probably would. But I'm not about to do that. It's I don't want someone to get tilted. I'd rather hack them in like a a more traditional way, like with thunderbolt paras or burns or crits. So that's the way I'll roll with that. Uh, <laughs> so heliolisk thunders that don't miss, hyper voice spam, grass knots, dark poles, great coverage moves. Gets uh, U turn and volt switch, which is pretty sweet. Gets pretty good support moves as well such as Breaking Swipe and Electro Web, which is pretty interesting to note there. Um, also, another potential Dynamax Captain, potentially. like I have like so many potential Dynamax Captains. G-Max Butterfree with Max Flutterby is like so stupid. Um, freaking Barrascuta can be one. Gigalith, Excadrill. Like, I have so many good options, and hopefully I can decide within the last few picks. So, almost done here. We have number 10 pick, which is Throw. A very fun fighting type that I am a big fan of. Um, also another potential Dynamax Captain because of that base 110 H 120 HP, it provides some really, really good bulk whenever it does Dynamax even further. Guts is a very sweet ability to run. I believe Mold Breaker is unreleased, so I couldn't run Mold Breaker if I wanted to, but Guts and Inner Focus are probably the better two I will have to deal with. Inner Focus is um, immune to Intimidate, which is pretty sweet, and I cannot be flinched in case I am going up against some Fake Out shenanigans or Rock Slide shenanigans. But besides that, Throw is a very sweet mine. It's very bulky. Everyone needs a fat fighting type to deal with the fat normals that otherwise might get in the way, such as a Snorlax. Um... It gets some good support moves like, you know, Bulldoze. It gets Wide Guard, um, Taunt. It's pretty slow, so I probably wouldn't be able to abuse that. But it gets great coverage and overall hits like a truck too with Guts. So my final pick of the draft is the Bear Tick. Now, this was another Pokemon that I realized Showdown did not have it updated whenever I was drafting. I believe when I was drafting, I believe it said it did get Swift Swim. But it does not get Swift Swim yet. So this is kind of like a dead pick to me. Honestly, if I were to switch a Pokemon, it probably would be this slot. And I'll probably look to doing that within the next few few days or weeks or whatever. However long I decide to do it. And to be fair, it's not awful on its own. Like, it's 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 decently fat. Like, actually, it's pretty slow. But it's, it's pretty strong. Base 130 attack. And it's like, you know, low-key bulky. 95 HP and 80 defenses isn't nothing to laugh at. But Ice is a horrendous defensive typing. So... It's not going to be able to showcase that very much. But yeah, I mean, if, if I was able to have Swipsum on this thing, it would be that much better. But the fact that I didn't realize it didn't, then that's going to make this kind of bad. It's not bad, like I said. Especially with 11, with 11 mons on each roster with 18 coaches in this limited um, draft pool. It, it's not a bad Pokemon, to say the least. But it definitely is on the trade block slash drop or like free agency block for the next few days to come. But that is the entire team, guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it. Um, I think I think it came out pretty sweet. It, it started out really strong, but as usual in, in most of my drafts, I usually fall off towards the end. Definitely some questionable questionable picks with like Weavile, maybe the Heliolisk, maybe the Throw. The Bear Tick to me is probably the weakest pick of them all. Uh, but the fact that it came last is completely fine to me. So with that, I do want to reveal my Dynamax Captain. And my Dynamax Captain for the Houston Team Rockets is none other than my first overall pick. The fifth round pick, but it's my first pick. The Excadrill. To me, this was a no-brainer. Um, in GBGC, this thing down max is almost all the time. Gets max Steel Spike and max Quake, which boosts its defenses, which I find incredible to allow it to survive even longer. It gets Swords Dance in case you want to go that route. You could even run Brick Break to get the max Knuckles if, if needed. Um, overall, it just made so much sense. It gets really bulky. Excadrill is is actually like not that not it's, it's pretty decently bulky before it has 110 hp it's got 60 defense and 65 spit f but when you double that hp stat it makes it that much bulkier you're essentially becoming like another like a chancy essentially when you're you're in this form so um definitely very excited to you know run around that with the uh, dynamax exadrill again a lot of potential candidates on the team but i think this is the best value and best you know hard hitter for the team so that's that's what that's what i got guys this is the houston team rockets lineup for abl season three i gotta let you guys know i'm really excited for this league um so much support has been put into this league uh, you guys should support it as well definitely a, a league on the rise and i really hope that it can take off because it's just it's i don't know man like 
a lot of leagues like out there like they don't put a lot of time into their uh, into their you know their presence I guess like to their coaches I guess like this has there's like a big prize pool very solid prize pool they have like exceptional content creator prizes weekly prizes they have prime time games so they'll have one each week one game will be streamed live on twitch um i was gonna originally stream my game so i'll have to see how that goes down but yeah i mean i don't know I, i'm so excited for this league and i really want that trophy so all that being said that's it all that being said y'all i gotta get out of here hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys for week one of the abl which i believe will be next week but i am probably wrong about that <laughs> so just be on the lookout follow me on twitter follow the abl on twitter and take it easy guys see y'all later